Okay, so I was inspired by this staircase that I found on Pinterest and I decided that I would make my own to zhuzh, I suppose, up my 12th scale dollhouse. So I thought I'd make a tutorial as well after discovering that, you know, there wasn't really much in the, in the way of tutorials for spiral staircases uh, unless you have a laser cutter available to you. So uh, I tried to make this as easy as possible. Uh, for everybody to follow along. Uh, the first thing I did was I drew a circle of 10 centimeter diameter onto some basswood. And this is uh, quite thick basswood actually. It's probably about between 1.5 and 2 mil thick. So it's quite, quite thick. Uh, after drawing the circle, I divided it into 12 slices. So uh, 30 degree increments on the protractor, or you can imagine that it's a small pizza, I suppose. And then once I had done that, I also drew a circle in the center of two centimeter diameter. This will become clear what this is for later. Um, and then I also drew another circle, I know all the circles, of four centimeter diameter for another marker, which will become clear again later. I'm just checking the dowel fitment. Here we go, there's the four centimeter diameter. Um, I have also included some written directions, so if my voice does become annoying to you, you can just turn it off and follow the written instructions instead, and it's completely fine. Um, perhaps even put your own jamming tune on and enjoy that way. So I made the wood into a more manageable size before cutting out the piece of wood. So first of all, I scored around the edge of the circle with my craft knife, and then I sliced in manageable smaller sections, which I would cut out bit by bit. Uh, it just made it a lot easier to cut this curved shape. So uh, I do recommend that technique uh, when it cutting out a circle. Uh, we're now gonna cut out our slices. Uh, I may take a couple of runs with the knife to do so. Uh, be sure that your blade is sharp. Um, if you need to ask, uh, help from an adult. Obviously knives are dangerous so just be careful and uh, take your time. Don't rush it, don't force the knife, don't force the knife through the wood otherwise it, it could break. So once you have your steps we're going to then drill a hole. So the circle that we made earlier, the inner one, that's the part that I'm cutting away now. The four centimeter circle is the one that is our guideline for where our drill needs to be. The drill I used was five millimeters and this is the same size as my dowel which is a five mil dowel and it's approximately 28 centimeters long so uh, I figured that was the perfect size for my dollhouse. I did check it in in my dollhouse first before I cut it and made sure that it was the correct height. So thread on your steps here we go, I'm just uh, showing you what the spiral looks like so you can get an idea of what the spiral staircase looks like. It's pretty cool. Um, obviously I sanded the steps as well to make sure they're nice and smooth. Uh, marking where the steps should go. I worked out for me, it was approximately 1.5 centimeters apart. Uh, so once I'd marked that, I glued the steps in place using a strong wood glue, a non-toxic wood glue. I actually use Evo stick but you can use any wood glue or any strong adhesive that is uh, preferable to yourself. And so it's worth bearing in mind that when you are gluing the steps that you need to glue them in the correct direction, which I did accidentally, mistakenly, <laughs> I did it wrong basically and I had to re-correct myself. So um, yeah, make sure your spiral goes the correct way. <laughs> Don't do the same thing that I did. I was like, oh, that looks right. Oh, that's not right. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, so I had to swivel them around again. Yeah, so you want to glue them in place of the spiral coming down. Um, looking from above, the steps should have no gaps in between them. They should uh, n not overlap, but they should be in line with each other as they fall down into the spiral shape. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I hope I've given enough of a visual representation in the camera here to show you what it should look like. If you need to, you may need to hold the step in place while the glue dries before you can move on to the next one. Um, but this is why I do prefer the wood glue because it, even though you can still move the steps with the wood glue, it does hold them in place pretty well. Okay. 
Okay, it's all dry. Look at that. Okay, so we're gonna make the banisters and the handrail now. I used a set of cocktail sticks that I actually got from Amazon. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is an optional step, actually. Uh, I'm using the diagonal length of an A3 piece of paper. Um, and there is a reason for this. I wanted as long a piece of card as I could. So it's kind of a thin card stock, I would say. Um, we're going to use this as the, uh, to go around the base of the steps. And uh, this was to replicate the look of the stairs that initially inspired me. So uh, you don't have to do this. You can leave the steps completely uh, bare on the edges. It's, it's just a, a style preference for myself. I did them in a few step increments at a time, gluing the edge of the step, again using the wood glue and then holding the card stock in place. Uh, you wanna go up in a 45 degree angle to make sure that you've got an even amount of card either side of the step. And luckily, because of the wood glue, it's quite easy to move the card if you do make a mistake. So it's not completely set in stone <laughs> straight away. So you do have a little bit of time to manipulate. Okay, it's dry. So uh, here I trimmed off the excess in the shape that I wanted. Okay, so now we're going to mark the center of the steps on the edge nearest to the uh, wider point of the step. Uh, so this is going to mark where our banister banisters go. Uh, I'm using a pin vise drill here just to drill through and, uh, on quite a wide uh, drill about two mil something like that um these are the cocktail sticks that i used i'm going to glue the bottom of them and then pop them through the holes that we've just drilled all the way down on each step Doesn't that look fancy? Uh, I'm just cleaning up any glue because you must be aware that if you do get glue on wood, if you're using a wood stain, it won't adhere, it will, it will show up the glue quite clearly. So I just wanted to kind of clear that up in case any, did, any glue did show. Um, I'm also going to make the handrail now. Um, using the same technique as earlier, I'm gonna cut a strip of card Fairly, fairly thin card, flexible card, and uh, yeah, I wanted I I made this too thick, so I decided that was too thick. I cut it a bit thinner. Uh, we're going to do the same as we did with the other piece. We're going to wrap it round. Uh, so as you can see, I sort of pre-curled it <laughs> to make my life easier. Um, we're going to use the glue on the edge, the outer edge of the cocktail stick balusters, and then we're going to attach the card. I'm using cloth pegs to secure the card while it dries. And I found it easier to manipulate the card by going from bottom to top and then sort of messing around with the middle in between. I hope that makes sense. I hope that there's enough visual representation so you can see what I did here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section. But yeah, normal clothes pegs are perfect for this. And uh, yeah, there we go. Doesn't that look amazing? Let them dry. Uh, we're gonna bulk up the handrail because, you know, it doesn't look very realistic at the moment. So here we are, here's our dried steps. We're gonna use some twine or string, a thick string or a very thin rope. This is like a braided twine, it's smooth. There's loads of it and it's fairly inexpensive. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to glue the inside of the handrail that we've just made um, and I'm going to inlay the rope 
on top of the cocktail sticks and inside of that card rail that we've made and this is going to bulk out the handrail so it has some substance to it. It's also very easy to manipulate the rope as well which is why I decided to use it as a material in the first place because I thought well it's it's thick enough and you can build it up. You can do as many layers of this as you want to. I think I did three. So when the first layer of twine was dry I added two more until I was happy with the thickness of the rail. probably should have sped this part up <clears throat> it's fine um so yeah we're on the third and final piece of twine here that i have bulked up each time i've let the string dry or the twine dry sorry and and then uh, re-glued and added another layer i wanted to try and uh, encapsulate the uh, encapture sorry the banisters inside of the twine so it looked like the rail was actually on top of them and they were built into it rather than laying on the side uh, because I didn't feel that looked very realistic. So here is what it looks like. You can see it's laying on top of the banisters. going to smooth it off because obviously it just looks like rope and that's not what we're going for we're going for a wooden staircase so we're going to try something I, I never did before but I thought maybe it will work um, using some sculpting tools and some wood filler you don't have to buy obviously a, as large a tub of wood filler I just have plenty of it <laughs> For reasons. Um, so what I'm doing is putting the wood filler pretty haphazardly onto the string and twine and filling out the gaps. Um, and I'm, what I'm also doing is in between the string, I'm, string and the banisters, sorry, I'm also sort of piling the wood filler in to meet the inside of the cardboard. And this is because the original staircase that I chose has a kind of wonky natural wood feel to it as if a branch has just been wielded and manipulated to create this staircase so I wanted it to look as natural as I could and not so polished and square obviously you can go whatever look you want to it's your staircase if you choose to follow this tutorial it's completely up to you um, I just felt that for what look I was going for that it suited so I will show you a close-up of what I've done um, at the moment still filling don't be shy with the filler pack it on because when it dries you may find there are some air spaces and you will need to refill them anyway so uh, once this was dry I sanded it just any sandpaper will do even an emery board if you don't have sandpaper um, because I wanted it to be nice and smooth and I will show you there we go look at that and you see there's spaces where it needs refilling but you see how it kind of has that natural wood look now 
So I refilled the spaces where there were bits of string poking through um, because I didn't feel that the texture would look very good when it was painted if I left them, so I wanted it to be completely smooth without any fibers, I suppose, popping through. Alright, so after sanding that again and you're happy with it, we're going to start on the painting and the varnishing stage. So I'm pretty happy with my stairs. I'm like, yeah, they're looking good. So I used a burnt sienna, I believe, just some acrylic paints. You can use whatever paints you feel comfortable using. Uh, I used acrylics just because they're easier, they dry quickly and uh, I know how to use them. I'm familiar with them. When you're painting, just make sure that you cover all of the spaces. There will be a lot of finickety spaces on these stairs. As I found out, <laughs> between the banisters and underneath and inside out and oh my goodness, everywhere. Yeah, here's some painting visual ASMR for you. Uh, sadly, I don't have the sounds of the paintbrush scraping the wood there. But here we go. So uh, I did everything in the same color I know what you're thinking. Well, that's just one color, how very one dimensional. But we're going to add some details in later once we've done a base coat. So yeah, you can see how patchy this is <laughs> so far. It's fine. We're going, I think I did about three coats, maybe three. Yeah, I'm asking you like, you know, you were there, you weren't there. Three coats, I think, of acrylic paint in this color. I was told by a member of my Twitch community that it looked like a chocolate stairs. And I don't know, I kind of agree. They do end up looking like they're made of chocolate and I don't think that's a bad thing. Who doesn't want a chocolate staircase? So uh, after doing this for what felt like four hours, we finally... <laughs> <laughs> have a base coated stairwell. As you can see, I kept turning the stairs round and upside down so I could make sure I didn't miss any any spaces and leave any cardboard unpainted. I also try to make sure that when I actually painted the stairs that I was able to use the brush strokes in the same direction because even though it's very very fine and unlikely to be really seen the acrylic paint can be quite thick and brush lines can be left in it so I wanted to make sure that the grain effect of the brush when it was on the stairs was in the same direction and the same with the outer portion of the uh, the card I used earlier around the steps themselves. I wanted to make sure that the brush strokes were in the same direction to give the effect, even though it's a base coat, to give the effect that the wood is traveling in the same direction. Rather than using up and down and random strokes, I try to follow the line of the stairs. I just feel this would make it look a lot more natural in terms of how wood is. Uh, the, the grain goes in one direction, it doesn't tend to travel in random directions, so I wanted to kind of make sure that that looked as realistic as possible. We're coming, we're coming near to the end of the first coat and I hope that gives some, some idea of how long that takes. Here we are, here's the chocolate stairwell, look at that. Cadbury's eat your heart out. Oh wait, am I going to get in trouble for that? So uh, I started off with a fan brush using a variety of different colours to create this wood grain effect. I started actually with the lighter tones. 
I used a, oh, a raw sienna. I think I used raw sienna. Um, I mixed that with the... Is it raw sienna? Yeah, I mixed that with the burnt sienna and I also used some burnt umber as well uh, later on and also a, uh, an actual black acrylic as well. Small areas by small area first using the very lightest tone and as you'll see it's very very light on there and kind of scary but just go with it it's fine don't be put off it's fine it's fine i kept saying to myself as i was completely and utterly freaking out um and then go in with the slightly darker and you see how the fan brush is very light on the top you don't want to actually smother the paint on there you want to create those lines which is why i use the fan brush because I wanted to create separate lines. So here I'm going in with a very dark. So I'm putting the paint on the brush and then slightly tapping it off and then going back in. And you're probably at this moment thinking, what are you doing? Just go with it, just go with it, it's fine. So we're going to create the more drastic tones first and then we're gonna go back in with the mid-tone on top and it will soften the whole thing out. Promise. I promise. So it's easier to work in smaller portions rather than trying to do the entire thing all in one go so here we are back with the mid-tone slightly darker to mid-tone and going back over the top of the wood grain that we've just done with that richer color and it sort of helps blend it all back in again so it's not so garish so it actually starts to become looking like the wood it's supposed to The stairs that I originally chose are quite reddish in wood colour anyway, so uh, that's why I chose quite reddy browns, although you could literally go for any kind of wood tone that you feel like. You don't even have to go for a wood tone if you don't want to. These could perhaps be metal stairs and you might want to paint them in a, a grey or a black or perhaps even white with you know hints of a darker grey to suggest that they are worn it's completely up to you so i also did the stairs and as you see I went in the same direction as I was mentioning before I tried to create each step so that the grain on each step was the same in terms of the same direction so they didn't look random or out of place I also went in with a brush a fan brush over the top to blend a bit more So here I am just blending, blending a couple of bits with the still slightly wet paint. So the paint is almost dry, but I just wanted to go in and blend out some areas and add some extra touches of color just to emphasize certain parts of the stairs. See, it's quite a drastic change, um, but once blended, you can see it looks pretty, it looks pretty good. 
<laughs> if I do say so. So here we are with the varnish. I'm using a satin varnish, but obviously you can use any varnish that you want. You can even use a PVA glue to seal the stairs. Uh, the reason I did this was because I didn't want the paint to come off and I wanted to give that sheen that the original stairs that I was inspired by had. Uh, so I picked up this Ronsil pretty inexpensively. I think it was about four pounds probably for the tin. And this tin is way more than enough than I need. I kind of started from the top of the stairs and went down again. And I think I did about two or three coats of this varnish. It takes about two hours to dry between each coat and is quite sticky while it's drying. So the way that I held the stairs up <laughs> without smudging or ruining any of the varnish work that I'd done was the the top part of the dowel there, the longest part of the top of the dowel that comes out of the top of the stairs. I hope that makes sense. I used that with a clothes peg and I hung it. I hung it up. <laughs> um, not on anything fancy. I actually hung it up on the edge of the doll's house because it had the perfect ledge. So uh, you can make do with anything, um, but it was perfect to let it dry for a couple of hours while I got on with other things and uh, it wasn't knocked or it didn't fall over or anything. I didn't have to rest it on the surface and ruin the varnish that I'd done. Um, so after I did the outside and the banisters of the stairs, I also did the steps and I also did underneath the steps and in between the steps, I did the dowel as well. So I made sure I coated everything. Uh, you may notice that the varnish is white in color, like a creamy white color. That will dry completely clear. It's pretty normal for a varnish to have a milky white consistency like this. Uh, same with PVA, it will dry clear, so do not panic. Um, and here is the final uh, creation. <laughs> here we go, the stairs in all their glory. Completely dry, completely varnished dry. They've got that soft sheen, you know, a nice, wood sheen to them. It brings out the grain effect that I painted. The handrail I'm really pleased with. It looks like natural wood has been sort of carved in there. And then I decided to show you what it looks like within the dollhouse. Now excuse the state of the dollhouse because it is currently being renovated which I'm going to post up more videos of the progress of that. It's going to be a very chic sort of ski lodge themed, modern ski lodge themed dollhouse. And this is just a dollhouse kit that I rescued from my grandfather's. Yeah, so I just cut a hole into the ceiling. As I say, excuse the rest of the state of this of the uh, of the dollhouse as we are renovating right now. I think it makes a wonderful centerpiece for the dollhouse. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.